Hello everyone. Welcome to Startup Namibia. My name is Slade Agun Larif. I'm the communications and marketing expert. Um, before we start, it's COVID-19, yeah. coronavirus. So we did the sanitation of the studio and we got our mask on. Mm -hmm. But as you can see, we are having a good social distance between us. So for the rest of the thing, uh, of this whole presentation, we are going to take off our mask because, you know, we are safe. Okay. Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> so, Oops. you can hear me clearer, clearer I, now. I can hear you clearer. Okay, so um, this is the first of its kind for Startup Namibia. We are going to have a campfire session. Oh, yeah. You know, it's winter. Yes. <laughs> so it's nice to keep warm while getting great ideas from mm. those who are in the industry, those who are startups, mm. such as yourself. Um, I would love to welcome, of course, our guest, Mercy Sidumbeko. Don't worry, guys. By the end of tonight, you're going to know her like she's your sister. <laughs> so this whole show is just an introduction to, to Mercy. Mm -hmm. But guys, um, for those who are following us on social media and those who know about um, about our newsletter, you know that the big thing we are doing at the moment is the PPE and hygiene kits. So these are um, uh, kits that any startup or small growing business can apply for. Um, it includes two liters of hand wash, two liters of hand sanitizer, two liters of disinfectant, and five masks. So you can apply until the 20th of May, uh, 20th of June, excuse me. Um, and you can apply online on our website, which is Startup Namibia, excuse me again, www.startupnam.org. I'll repeat that, www.startupnam.org. Um, so we, we encourage everyone to apply, especially women-owned businesses and businesses that are uh, in the 14 regions. Um, so back, back to the exciting issues of today. <laughs> um, yeah, Mercy is, is an entrepreneur and she has taken the road from working for, for someone exclusively and then entering the business world and now managing both. She's got one foot in the business world as an entrepreneur, the other foot she has to say yes, boss. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So um, she's energetic, resourceful, and uh, a truly driven woman. Um, and she is the brains behind Dimples, Psychometric, and Management. Please, uh, welcome to the show. Thank you. Thank you very much. Can you take a few minutes to welcome, I mean, to introduce yourself uh, to, to our audience? Ah, uh, yes, sure. Um, as Letejo has said, my name is Mercy um, Stumbeko. Um, I'm the founder of Dimple Psychometrics and Management, which was formerly known as uh, Mercy HR. Why, so why, why the change? <laughs> that is the, the, the process and the part of reinvention. So if you look at Mercy, it's my name, it's my name. So sometimes look at your audience and see what, what, what gets them. As soon as I said, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm the owner or founder of Mercy, people are like, ah, okay. But when I say dimples, like, okay, yeah, tell me more, you know? <laughs> <laughs> so you look at your audience and that's where the whole reinvention also comes from. So, so I founded it in 2008 and um, yeah, we're still going and still going strong. So, so uh, what does dimples do? I mean, what kind of business is it? Dimples, um, as you know, I tend to refer to myself rather as a coachpreneur not an intrapreneur. Why is that? That is more about the business that uh, Dimples does. We give a lot of um, leadership training, leadership development, um, entrepreneur tips for young, uh, for young and upcoming trainees. Uh, by trainees, I mean vocational trainees because I'm also heading the Nampower Training Center. So also just teaching them not to be comfortable with where they are but to explore more as business owners as well. Yeah. So a lot of leadership development, um, psychological assessment, career development, the whole tutsi, okay. the whole tutsi. Excellent, um, and, we'll, and we will learn more as, as, the, as the night goes on. Yeah. Uh, but let me take some time to tell all of you watching from home on social media, on our Facebook uh, page, um, 
all about the new kid on the block called Startup Namibia. All right. So we started um, formally in, in February this year. Startup Namibia is actually a joint Namibian-German technical cooperation project. Um, and it, it's funded by the German government and implemented by GIZ uh, together with the Ministry of Trade and Industrialization. Uh, and our partners also include the Ministry of Higher Education, Technology, and Innovation, and the city of Vintuk. Um, ex actually, we are housed by the city of Vintuk, and we are uh, currently based at the premises of Boca Maso, Boca Moso Entrepreneurial Center, which is in Karutura. Um, and at this center, we are also going to um, have our building at some point. Well, we are working on having a startup incubation center, uh, which will offer a one-stop shop for all startups. That's now, how do you bring your idea from to innovation mm -hmm. and then to income? So uh, we look forward in the, in the following years to, to welcome a lot of uh, startups to, to Startup Namibia Incubation Center. Um, and I think uh, now we can get back to, to the goodies of the, <laughs> of the night, you know, the, the honey, as it were. Um, so let's start at the beginning. What, 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 what drove you to start your business? Okay, um, it, it's, it is quite a funny story. A funny story that was not so funny at the time because I actually got fired. <laughs> I got fired from my job. I was working for a European embassy and it so happened, and this is one thing that I'm going to underline as well, it so happened that I felt like one of the most important core values for me, non-negotiable, was being, I felt like, violated, which is human rights, people well-being, people development, and, and just the, the caring of people, your employees, you take care of them and stuff like that. So I felt like this aspect at some point was being violated, especially for the local, local um local employees, and I actually spoke up and said, no, it's not right, we need to treat our people much better, uh, people need to be appreciated, and so forth. And because I spoke up, as you know, uh, with, um, what do you call it, diplomatic missions, they yeah. have diplomatic immunity. Right. So the, there was, uh, I felt like, a real abuse of personnel, of people, and once I spoke up, actually, I got very victimized to a, to a, to a whole different level. And, and that the, now resulted in you having to say, okay, I'm standing up and then... I literally find. stood up. And when I stood up, like I say, the mistreatment and whatnot, and I went to LAC, Legal Assistance Center said, no, my people are violated. I was literally, one day I came in and my things were on the floor, I'm fired. Okay. So... Be, me being me, I took on the issue with the labor law, with the labor court. <laughs> right, right. And but through my process, which was really harsh, I realized that you know, um, local people that are employed by international organizations, especially diplomatic missions, need some sort of unionization or legal representative, and people are not aware of their rights. So that's how I actually started the whole idea. So look, let me try and see if I can actually learn more about this. And through my case, I couldn't pay my own because they kept the money. Yeah. I was not paid that salary for that month, for the next month was kept from me. So I was told, we'll make sure that you suffer yeah. until you withdraw the case. So I learned a lot by this whole process. I was working for the person who was representing me, Sam January. And then because of that, I decided I'm going to study labor law and represent so that I have both the, the paper as well as the experience. So this is how the idea actually started up with Mercy HR. So I want to represent people who don't have resources, who have to deal with such powerful institutions, you know. And um, so the original idea was 100% to create some legal representation for, for people in Namibia or local employees. And, and how was that process, let's say, from when you decided when you had some, some training and you decided, okay, I'm going to open a company. Mm. Can you tell us about that process a bit? Look, the process, as you can see, obviously that was the identification of the problem. I knew that there is a problem on, on, the, on the market and let me find a solution to it. So 
you know, I, and sometimes we think, yes, I have a problem, there's a major problem, I have a solution to it. And what I realized that the people actually working for international organizations, they didn't see that as a problem. So this brings me to what I always refer to, um, whatever problem that you're trying to solve, do people see it as a candy, a sweet, just for fun, vitamin, something that, well, I might use one day, or an actual painkiller. So when you're solving a problem, ask yourself, um, am I really addressing somebody's pain point? And then I realized, actually, I wasn't. The people were looking at it, especially the people that were my audience or my focus, they started, their response was very low. And again, you have to redirect. However, what I actually got from studying labor law was people consulting me and um, I just want to bring you back. Do you remember how Informante was in 2008, 2009? There was mm. nothing exciting like Informante juicy stories. So my story was actually in the Informante a lot because it was a major labor, chaos, um, la uh, labor court. And people actually started calling me and saying, no, no, can you come and speak to our leaders? Can you share your story with our employees? We, we want to do it right before we do it wrong, before we even start. Uh, Mercy, can you actually come and speak to, or Mercy, actually come and speak to me and my company. So now I started kind of changing my direction and say, okay, there's a major more leadership problem um, people wanting to actually develop themselves. So my business as a coach entrepreneur, it's more about knowledge development. So I'm in the knowledge um, business, sharing, developing, and then using psychology, because my first degree was actually in psychology, industrial psychology. People want to know who they are. And I realized that you have to be very mindful of what is happening around you. And that helped me a lot to be attentive to what my, my uh, potential audience has actually wanted. They didn't want legal representation. They wanted leadership representation because everything happens and rises and falls on leadership. Nothing changes whether it's in society or an organization without leadership. Nothing develops, nothing is created, nothing is formed, nothing is improved. So, and, and that's what people were now looking for, say, I want to improve myself. I want to improve my organization. Mm. So this is how Dimpo's re kind of directed and reinvented itself in that way. Right, uh, I think, you know, pivoting is, is part of startup culture. Exactly. You, you need to read, read the room to say, okay, my, my audience, my target market is not feeling this. Let, mm. let me see how I can improve my product or service based on what they need. Uh, and you have highlighted that very well. Oh, but this culturepreneur thing is such an interesting word. Uh, I haven't heard it before. Where did you come up with it? And uh, uh, is it really your term or is it no, out there already? <laughs> it's actually not originally my term. Um, in fact, it's a term that, because um, one of the major things that as a startup or a business or an entrepreneur you have to do, find a mentor, find a coach. And actually, my coaches are from John Maxwell. I'm part of the John Maxwell team. And they are the ones who said, you know, but don't you think you are? Don't you think, you know, uh, you are more a coachpreneur because this is your product. So it was out of a conversation, literally, mm -hmm. with one of my coaches that coachpreneur is a thing from John Maxwell. I'm sure everybody John Maxwell, yeah. so I'm part of that team. And obviously it came because of the, the, the product, the service that I was given. It wasn't just one specific issue. It was, like I say, um, people wanting to learn more, people wanting to, to bounce off. And for me, it's about um, directing people to see their potential. And this is a whole vast of different people. Like I say, I'm also managing the training department for, and the vocational training center. So, and when I always talk about my non-power kids, I always look at the trainees. The trainees, they need to also change their thinking in terms of you cannot always wish to work for somebody. And now we're looking at them being innovative, coming up with ideas, and actually them being employers and, and entrepreneurs. So we already started with that for Nampower. Right, right. I mean, um, Namibia just cannot have uh, enough jobs for everyone. No. So entrepreneurship and starting your business is, is, is a key aspect of economic development. Mm. Um, but from your experience and from, from what you coach people, what is, why, what is the feeling uh, among the working class, those that are really employed? Do, you, do people have that uh, entrepreneurial spirit? Um, do you pick that up a lot? I, I pick that up a lot. You know, um, 
the problem that a lot of people are facing, including myself, that I faced, I think if I wasn't thrown into it, it's, it's one of those um, where you, you take on the values of the society, the pressure from the society in terms of everybody tells you it will never work. You have to have an employer. I, I, I think, to be honest, um, one of my, my heroes is my mother. I know everybody hears that a lot, but this is a woman who became the first Caprivian or Zambezi female chief, so to say. So I admire her a lot, exactly. <laughs> when, you, when you gave credit when it's way it's due, I just remembered I have to stop the presses. We have to welcome Ms. Helena Aluendo. Uh, I apologize for not welcoming our sign language uh, interpreter. Thank you very much for being with us tonight. And um, a warm welcome to all, um, all of those people who cannot hear. Um, very, very welcome to the Today Show. Thank you. you I, I stopped you there when you were talking about your mom who uh, yes. was a trailblazer, as it were. Uh, yeah, no, no, she is. And for me, the value of that she's always told me is like, whenever you are swimming in, in, in a bad situation, use that to, to actually come out of it somehow. So, but the understanding of starting your own business is, is, is so foreign to our parents, to our people. And you get a lot of people telling you, ah, it will never work. You're just going through something. Don't worry. Um, so you, you actually, this is what I'm saying, the thinking process. And one of my focus in Dimpos is helping people to learn how to think. And our society teaches us what to think. Well, can you explain that a bit more? Because <laughs> I, I might be a victim of, <laughs> of that. <laughs> let, me, let me learn here today. Um, so, so, you know, learning how to think is, I, I always use, I have my own model. And, and you know, learning how to think is, is, is situational, not when you are in this, this is applicable overboard. What to think is, uh, you know, you, you, for example, you finish school, go to university, get a job. Right, if you're right. a girl, probably get married, have babies and stuff. Start finding what makes you happy and how you can make yourself happy. So we have a lot of societal pressures in terms of how the process should go like. But, uh, and that how the process should go like is what we are expected to do. This is why I'm saying what to think. So you, you start being limited by what is set out for you. And we all have different paths. We all have different paths. We need to learn how to maneuver our own ways and what really just gives you that joy and that oomph. So, so um, Dimples will, and people need to call you because we can't give out all this information for, for free, but people need to call you to find out what tactics and methods they can use to unleash that how to think aspect of their lives. Exactly. Um, uh, and also as businesses, not uh, just in the personal life. Exactly, exactly. Uh, so the, the, the redirection, um, and one thing that I always want to think in terms of the how to think as well, it's, it's uh, if I look at the, how I started, I know it was the idea to do labor law and stuff like that, and you redirect and say, hey, this is not working. So you always have to ask yourself, um, yes, I have a purpose. I, I want to do this, I want to solve a problem, but the reality is sometimes we are made to feel like profit is wrong. Ah, you know, how, how will I charge? No, you tell me, what do you want to pay me? And I always say, dude, even the, the good Samaritan had money to help. So if you understand, yeah, <laughs> so this is where you start changing how people think and not what they think. So mm. society, makes us feel like when you're talking about money, it's a bad thing. And uh, maybe you're stealing from other people. This is where we need to change the thinking in terms of support your local businesses so that you can also be supported. And um, profit is important if you want to actually proceed or, or actually build your business. Um, so I, I do have a model that I call the RSVP. But don't share it now on the show, no. please. Well, no. <laughs> <laughs> we don't want you to lose, lose your money here. Yes, yes. Um, before I go to the next question, I just want to invite everyone that's at home. Um, if you're watching this show and you're getting ideas, you want to ask Mercy some questions, what is a shoe size? <laughs> <laughs> some tips on, you know, uh, how you can improve your business. And, yes. Um, yeah. Or maybe you want to find out her, some information about her business model. Guys, 
go to our Facebook page, Startup Namibia, and then you can ask us any questions just under, under this video. We really welcome it. You can also follow us on Twitter and Instagram and ask your questions there. Um, now back, back to uh, Dimples and, and you. So you are having one foot in the business world mm -hmm. and the other foot in the entrepreneurial world. Yes. Uh, can you tell us about you know the challenges that come with this and you know um, how it, this must be quite exciting because you've got two deadlines you know two lives you're living and you probably I say because I was fired so I was unemployed for a while but then I started Dimpos and based on what I was offering this is what actually I remember thinking to myself at some point. If I'm going to focus on corporate, most people that are contacting me are corporate. Let me go back into corporate. And, and it did happen so well. So sometimes I feel like Nampower is also one of my clients and I give it my all. Now being in both, in both areas in terms of temples and things, I always tell people, start where you are. And I would tend to procrastinate a lot and being afraid and whatnot. So use whatever you have. What I do with Nampower is so far, my journey is at a point where I choose to take most Fridays off. So as long as you're using, you're following a model, please use that model to start pivoting and actually building your business. Having two deadlines is part of it, but I also have a say that I always say, um, guess what, the richest man on earth as well as me, we have 24 hours in a day. How did he do it? How did he start it? So he was not given an extra hour. So you either, you know, the, I think we're all talking about the 5 a.m. club. Um, I get up early. I get up at 4 a.m. I need to make time. And time Even is in winter? Oh, yeah. I'm a winter person, by the <laughs> way. I'm a morning person. So, cool. <laughs> so you, you need to make time. And you need to decide where you want to go with both your private as well as um, as well as your so it's about it's about setting goals it's about knowing where you're going and then having the model to help exactly you get and the, like well like what i'm saying i still look at Nampower, my current employer as honestly a client so i give them my own and some of the people that i work with in Nampower contact me and say oh do you mind if i give your number to my wife do you mind if my kids come and speak to you so you see how giving it your all mm -hmm. actually creates clients wherever you are and um, like I say usually I take Fridays off I'm at that point and everything has really been going well that I'm managing to take off on a Friday depends on how busy I am but like is, I is said, it is it a is it a true off day or is it a day that you know you consolidate your emails and you you know you make the calls that you've been uh, meaning to make and you do soft work or is it a real off day sitting back going on the startup page and looking at our albums no, and you know. No, so what oh. I mean an off day, it means that now it's Dimples day. Oh, sure. So it's now not Nampower day, it's Dimples day. And but I'm, what I mean by Dimples day, most of my meetings, private meetings, they're now on Friday and Saturdays. I have my leadership sessions on, on, on those days, especially Fridays. So, but it also depends on um, how, how much work I have lined up for that Friday or that is still pending with Dimples and actually really reaching out. And you, you really must give it your all. Depends, like, if, if you've set goals that this is what eventually I want to do. For example, eventually I want to choose to only work on Monday and Tuesday because I love what I do for Nampower, totally. I, I think you are, you're following that model of the four-hour work week kind of vibe, you know, where you're super efficient, you plan well, you cut away distractions, mm -hmm. and wow, okay. Um, but let me move you to, to back, back to what's when you started. Um, when you started Dimples, you kind of grew into it from what I'm hearing. But entrepreneurs sometimes start with an idea. How, how important do you think an idea is uh, in starting a business and contrasting it with you? Because you really moved into it naturally. Mm. You didn't have like a crazy idea like Facebook or, and, you know. So how important do you think ideas are? Look, ideas are important, but like I mentioned, I don't know if I, I was very clear, your idea must be solving a problem. I think for me that's very important. And again, it, it still brings you to my version or my saying of, is your idea going to solve a problem in terms of, is it candy, is it just a sweet? Um, 
wh what are you selling exactly? Will it, will it resolve a problem that is there? So some of us, yes, we, we, we look at a Facebook idea, but what, where do you, are you going to apply that solution for that problem that you are addressing? Will it be relevant? Is it an idea that you got, like you say, from Facebook and this person was doing it in the States? Is it going to be applicable here? I'll give you a silly example. Example that I say, look, um, okay, coming from an electricity industry, and I've used this idea before, people are wasting electricity, so you want to automate the whole electricity environment or for, for an organization, and you think, hmm, how about motion sensors? Yeah, no, no, to definitely say a motion sensor, if nobody's moving, electricity is out. But would it be applicable in a situation where we're sitting like this? It means that the lights would be dimming because we're not <laughs> moving so much. So you understand, explore the idea and actually speak to your potential audiences. Some of us, like you say, it came naturally that you pay attention to underlying needs mm. of people. But please, with your idea, talk to people. But um, if I can throw that back at you, what about, because there are only so many ideas, mm. right? And you, we, not everybody can come up with a great idea. What if someone is doing something in Indonesia and you say, I might try it, I might try it in Namibia and, mm -hmm. and, and try it. What do you think about taking business models from elsewhere and just trying it as a business? Um, what do you think about that? I actually, I support that a lot. And I always say, look, life is too short, first of all, <laughs> um, to make your own mistakes. And, and sometimes I'm one person, I'll tell you the truth. I'm not good with original ideas. But bring me an idea and let me work on it and, and, and. But you have to be very attentive to the environment where you're going to apply it. Always use something that somebody's doing and learn from their success. You might need to redirect based on your environment, based on maybe your idea will even be much bigger here in Africa. Look at how uh, Zoom, we're all crazy about Zoom. Who, who, who paid attention to Zoom, let's say in January? this year Jim. <laughs> no. you understand so that zoom idea was also like especially when you're in the knowledge um, business get zoom apply it here use it here and see whether it can work in schools see whether google classroom can work in schools life is too short get ideas and be successful based on the model of somebody who's successful in indonesia don't yeah, even try to make a mistake exactly and then and then you can you know um, leverage of their mistakes because they have already made the mistakes exactly, and then, uh, exactly. you can apply it here. You can apply it here, just work it a bit and, and definitely I'm, I'm all Guys, she doesn't mean that twerking. Ah, oh, mercy. <laughs> Please. Uh, <laughs> no, uh, so, um, but reinventing is quite a big part of startups um, and, and pivoting, you know, you, you need to always be aware. But what are some of the tactics you use when you're doing uh, work for Dimples? How do you identify what your s customers or your stakeholders are thinking? Do mm -hmm. you have some kind of survey when they finish their training or what mechanism do you use? Um, that model that I told you about, mm -hmm. RSVP, I'll just go into it briefly. Um, one thing for me, uh, as I said, it's one of my core values. What, what do people want? What do they need? So I use the RSVP to, to always see really where they're going. We have conversations. I, I sit with my people or my potential clients and say, R, when we're talking of R, what results are they looking for? And remember, people are always good at what they don't want. So mm, let's talk about the results. What do you expect from me? And, 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 and. then secondly, um, the systems that they may have or may not have in place, or should I bring in the systems? I gave you an example of Zoom. Um, in schools, schools want results, they still want their kids to, to continue or their pupils to continue in school, but what systems do they have in place? Schools had to, to think in terms of uh, Zoom, Google Learning, Google Hangouts, and so that's a system that they have put in place. Now V is, is, um, is the value add. And you find that sometimes, like I started also, I, I thought the results I'm looking for is to be a representative for the un or a union person and stuff like that. But when you start talking to people, say, but what values, wh 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 what keeps them going? What keeps them awake and make them really sleep at peace? What are they trying to achieve? Their core values. 
when you start hearing people speak passionately about something, then you tie it in with the results they are looking for. Sometimes it's totally a different direction that they're actually wanting. And when you tie in the results with the values, and this is where I, t I start teaching people and even the young people, look, your values should be your driver. In fact, you develop your marketing strategy based on your values and the results that you're looking for. And then P, I always say P because it's for the, for the very end, because P is about people and partnerships. Sometimes what I always also advise people is if you might be good in something, guess what? Partner up with somebody. I, I, I'm the worst person when it comes to internet or online and stuff like that. But you know what? Then I use somebody else who's very good at, uh, at something. Then I'm supporting their business and then bringing them in. Then Absolutely. I, I don't have to do everything. If I know I'm not good at that, let me focus on what I can do. And then I hire somebody else's you know, services to do that. So th that's how now. Um, yeah, but I mean, I, I see you're touching on uh, the P part of RSVP, mm. especially with regards to, you know, filling the gaps. But how do you feel about collaborations, collaborating with uh, someone that's in your sector, mm -hmm. but that may be stronger in uh, another aspect of, of HR? Yeah, so definitely that is the, the partnership part, that, that I, I create partnerships uh, with different people. Um, look, uh, uh, for example, you're bringing in HR and HR is very diverse. So sometimes, like you say, somebody's contacting me, let's say, for labor relations. And then as we are busy with that, they say, oh, actually, they want more maybe industrial psychology related issues, le leadership and psycho psychological assessments. Then I know somebody else who can do it. So those are where the P in terms of partnerships and leveraging with other people that we can be in business with. Mm -hmm. And look, I. I don't believe it when people say I'm self-made. Uh, collaborations are, are what actually build us. Teamwork makes the dream work. Exactly, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> oh, excellent. And, and um, if you look at the competition aspect, it's important, you know, it drives us to be better business people. You know, it's good for the consumer. Mm. Uh, they have more choices. Yes. Uh, price sometimes comes down. Mm. Uh, so it is good, but we should really look at how can we leverage partnerships um, and collaboration to, to drive our businesses and go forward. Exactly. I, I absolutely agree with that. Um, I'd like us to get real uh, for, for, for a moment here. Everybody talks about you know, the, the sweetheart part of uh, entrepreneurship. Everything is cool, you're hustling, you make it, you become rich. Uh, yeah. But we never see you know, the challenges. Uh, as an entrepreneur that has gone through, through many years of building your businesses, I would like you just to open up to the startups out there and tell them, look guys, watch out for this. Mm. It's not that easy as you think. Uh, can you please tell us about your struggles? Look, um, I think one of the major realization when you're starting a business is actually realizing that, you know what, um, being self-employed and being an entrepreneur when you start off, they tend to be two different things. So that excitement of my own hours, my own thing, guess what, suddenly, especially if you were working and then decide to stop, there's always the fact that, oops, I'm now actually employed by me, <laughs> which means I'm getting a salary from me and I didn't make much. Then advertising, and this is why I was also talking about, get comfortable with talking about money and profits. Um, then that fear of talking about profits will actually be your downfall. Because you have to pay everything else. You know, as soon as you register a company, I, I also learned the hard way. Guess what? You're expected to do submissions to the revenue, um, uh, all that tutti with regards to taxes. And if you don't do it, guess what? They start charging you, even whether, whether you're making money or not. So those are things that you have to be on top of. And just, just to cut you there, so would you advise some startups to first maybe look at the idea and, and, and not register, but just you know, fine tune the idea. And that is also a service that Startup Namibia will offer in the future to say, come with your idea, let's work on it together. And then once you're ready, then you can go register. Mm. What do you think about that? I, I honestly definitely um, second that. And I'm really glad that Startup Namibia has come into yeah. existence because mm. I feel like you guys will really solve a lot of young, young um, 
young business people's dilemma because there, there is really a lot of hardships in terms of financial startups, in terms of um, resources like where to get money uh, to, to, to even finance an idea. And one thing that I want to also emphasize on people, start making people feel like what you want to share with them is actually worth it. And you will, you, there is um, an advantage that people will get from that idea of yours. Excellent. And yeah, yeah. when they offer you, even if you're offering it for free, make people feel like they want more. And, and go out of your way, because this is what will get you partnerships as well. Because would you partner with you if you were the one giving the service? Um, we, we talk about passionate what not, but will you really trust me or will you trust you with your idea? Um, um, you touched on two issues there that I want you to elaborate on. The first one is passion. Mm. We spoke about the idea, but an idea without a passion or a business model without a passion, I want you to touch on that. Um, and the second one is when you look at um, how businesses um, operate, do you think uh, a big team is important. How, what do you think about the progress of you know just working by yourself for a while mm -hmm. uh, and then adding adding uh, a staff complement? So maybe you can touch on those two issues for us. Okay, so passion is is is, is usually actually born out of your your values and your non-negotiables. In my case, like I say, people development and people support is very important. So that passion is driving me to make sure that I'm developing skills, I'm sharing ideas, I'm helping people rediscover their best selves. Uh, because if I don't have that, chances are I'll be bored because I'm, I might just be focusing so much on profit that I lose out on that. And it's the passion that actually keeps people coming back because of your energy, the oomph that you're giving them. You know. Um, and passion k keeps you going. It keeps you going because you're looking at tomorrow, how can you do it better? How can you develop this better? How can you do it better? Because that is what excites you. That is what actually ca um, gets you up at four o'clock in the morning like I do. I, I want to learn more. I want to pay more attention to this aspect. Um, sorry, I can't remember your, your, your. The second question was growing as a business in terms of being alone and then mm. having a gradual st staff complement. In my own experience, I do have one person. Um, so eventually, as the demand is going, and amazingly, in Namibia, word of mouth is very important. This is why your passion and your drive and just giving it your all. When somebody leaves your office, your services, they must feel like, hey, I will tell John about this. Oh, I will tell Mary about this. Oh my God, you charged me $200. I, I really feel like this is worth $400. But thank you so much. I'll recommend or I'll come back. And with that, my business started growing. This is what I'm saying. I, I started deciding to, on a Friday, it becomes a dimples day, not a numb power day. On weekends, I have, so I have a person who now helps me out with, you know, setting up uh, appointments, setting up presentations. Um, so I coach her and, uh, and she couldn't believe it because the other day I said, oh, I don't know what I'll do without you. It's like, me, what am I doing? But appreciating that person because eventually things become too much. You can't get to everything. And this is where the partnerships, even if it's your employee, it's a partnership. Develop her know what you want, share with her the ideas. Sh she might be sharing the same passion, but eventually, who knows, maybe now when we start working two days or three days, then another person will come in. And the partnerships in terms of maybe the other person is good in something. Like this, um, this girl, um, her name is Helvi Mufeti. She's an economist. So you would think, no, but she brings in something that I don't have. She brings in the money aspect and how to, and let, how, how is this situation with, the, with, with corona affecting us? What can we do? How can we take advantage of this situation? Uh, that doesn't come natural to me, hey? Mm -hmm. So, yeah. Then you need the then I need a, a, a help extra it. set of eyes. A exactly. Another, another viewpoint just a exactly. to help you. Exactly. I mean, we spoke about, is there anything you want to add on challenges? On challenges, look, um, that you went through that really helped you shape, uh, shape your business? Yes, mindfulness. Um, being mindful, first of all, we talk about developing people, but start being aware, the emotional intelligence aspect. Um, I told you that I wake up at four o'clock. 
when do I feel like I'm more creative with ideas? When do I feel like I learn more? I have this thing of at 2 a.m. I'm like <coughs> awake. So I need to be aware and I tell people, pay attention to also your own self. When are you more productive with ideas? Some of us is literally 2 a.m. I'm up and awake. At first I would like, okay, ah, good idea. The next day, next morning, I feel like, yes, I, I, I thought of something, I can't remember, but now I sleep with a notebook on my, on my bedside. Another thing is, um, there are certain things, we all have different kind of procrastination types. <laughs> so some people, the procrastination is because um, they feel like the idea is so big and how can they start? It's, 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 so so they, get, they get stuck in their mind because the idea is so big, it's too huge. Some people, it's about, they always judge Paulus and Mercy who, ah, the idea is so small. I need to wait until it's, it's perfect, the timing and stuff like that. Know your weaknesses in terms of what is causing you to, to hold back. What are your limiting um, uh, things that are holding you back? And those are some of the issues with mindfulness. And I remember one person asked me, oh, Mercy, I'm always late and, 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 and I never get on there on time. And I said, no, it doesn't sound like you're not, you don't, you're not good with time. It sounds like you like taking on too much. So therefore, because you have to finish Mercy's work, you have to finish Lecejo's work, and by the time you get to Helena, oops, time has gone. You are a perfectionist. So those are some of the things that for me was holding me back as well, waiting for the right time to, to, to take that day off, waiting for the right time to bring in somebody who can help me. And it's very important to have a model. It's very important to have a model to follow. Um, and I mean, those were some of the challenges. What about some of those things that, uh, how long have you been in business? Is it I, I, I founded um, Dimpos in 2008. Sure, yeah, so it's still a young company. Mm. Uh, Startup Namibia works with companies that are under five years, so you're, you're right there. Um, but um, what about uh, some of the flowers, some of those great things that happened then you're like, hey, I'm gonna keep going. Mm. Um, can you give us some of those inspirational stories? Um, uh, you know, one of my favorite one is I, I was hired by, by a company. It was at most of my clients, the first original clients were more like technical engineers and stuff like private. I was hired by a company to, 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 to hold a disciplinary. Like I said, through studying labor law, I, that's where I actually got my, my initial clients. And I had this disciplinary hearing where I ended up actually firing somebody. I know, Ouch. oh mercy, Ouch. I know. <laughs> so, <coughs> that, and this guy was like, please, I know I did wrong, and, 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 and. So, and he went from begging to being very angry. So, for a while, like angry and threatening. You understand? But here's the flower of the story. A few months later, somebody calls me and say, hi, Miss Mercy, uh, my name is so, so, and so. Guess who, who, who referred me? Who referred you? It was Letsejo. Oh, who? Uh -huh. The yeah. guy that I fired. Yeah. So, oh, uh, this is unexpected. Said, no, no, no. He said, as much as you fired him, he was aware that he was wrong here. And actually, the, 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 the way you did the process is such that he is proud to say, he has decided to start a company and he would like you to actually be his legal representative as well as he will always refer you or refer anybody to you any day wow. because you were spot on but you gave advice, you went above and beyond even as you fired him. So for me that is one of the sweetest story ever, honestly. Wow. I mean, uh, from my experience, I mean, your work will always cover you. Uh, at my, when I was also in the working environment, mm. um, there were a team of just imagine it's a company with a lot of heads. A and then uh, there were, they had to always decide on my contract together. Yes. <laughs> and there was this lady that I'm so 100% sure she hated me. And then one day it came to my contract because I was an intern for a long time and mm. they had to decide if I can be the communications person. Or not. And then after the meeting, uh, my colleague ran to me. She was in the meeting. She's like, oh my God, that lady uh, recommended you. And I was like, I thought she didn't like me. So she was tough on me, mm. but 
you know, because because of the work, she said, no, the person deserves uh, the position. No, and, and so you, you definitely were producing more than what was expected, more than what the mm. average person yeah. was, was, was giving. And this is what sets us apart. Like I say, Namibia is very small. Make people feel like actually they should have paid more. Give it your all. Like I say, this for me was one of the sweetest stories ever. Um, and if we can touch on, especially in that beginning phase, when you're starting your business, can you touch a little bit on free stuff, freebies? I mean, because it's a problem. If people get used to mm. free stuff, then they are not willing to pay. How do you deal with that? I think, look, um, I, I also at some point realized, because remember when I started, I, I started also with representing people who have been fired and, uh, and stuff like that. And yes, I also started giving my services for free to some people, especially employees. But later on, I started realizing you have to, 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 to how do you say, to, to draw the line. You will find that people that were receiving free services, sometimes they would not show up for appointments, sometimes they So you need to also be that tough cookie that says, up to here, I will not, you know, up to here, that's where I, I begin. So however, there are some, free, uh, some freebies, you, so you have to kind of wait. Um, we are getting okay. Yes. So we, we have some questions from social media. Mm. So we are going to break for uh, Q and A time. Bueno. S yeah. So and then we'll be back shortly just to take some questions from from our audiences. Thank you so much uh, for the work so far. Thank you. Welcome back, everyone. Mm -hmm. You are on the campfire sessions s powered by Startup. And uh, we are very, very happy to have Mercy here from Dimples. Uh, we are learning so much. And uh, it's time for question time, you know. Mm -hmm. It's all good and well if we talk, but social media is about engaging. So the first question from Googie Googie, uh, that reminds me of Ngugi Wationgo. Wat yes, <laughs> I thought of that as yeah. well. <laughs> so um, the question is, would you recommend establishing startup networks beyond Namibian borders? For instance, partner with um, those outside, outside Namibia. So, question is to you. Do you recommend you know, growing beyond the borders with maybe our Kenyan brothers and sisters? Yes, you know, um, I, 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 sorry, I'm laughing because you won't believe one of my partners is actually a Spanish partner. In, uh, <laughs> I know, I jumped wow. too far, yeah? Um, one of my partners literally, and, and yesterday I got another email that I, I actually, um, since 2017, I, I traveled to Spain, um, to San Sebastian, where I'm partnering up with, with, with the company there called Technica. And, um, oh, but I do this on my own. I, at first, you know, because obviously maybe Nampawa or my, my, my employer was not very supportive, but other, other aspect of Dimples that I actually partner up with some clients and uh, or partners in Spain. Um, it's one of the, the other things. Um, I've also once been contacted by a school in Zambia and um, because of the, the, the teachers. In fact, I, I got to know this it's incredible where wherever you are, somebody, whoever you're talking to, be professional. Who, uh, you don't know who needs your service another part of the world. So by all means, partner up. Partner up beyond borders. Um, look, knowledge, knowledge sharing has no limits. And you, you'll be surprised what you can learn from those people. I'm partnering up with uh, some people. Um, in Germany, in Germany, it's more my mentor who has actually made a proposal to be part of a, 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 a women's book session that we have and we want to write a book. She's already published. Wow. Um, so she's from Germany and you understand. So I, I, I think, I mean, while we are waiting for the, for the second question to come up, I think it's, it's so important, you know, to, to look at partnerships. And it doesn't have to be so, you know, rigid mm -mm. in terms of having an agreement or something. You know. I am on WhatsApp groups with people in Japan. Ooh, mercy. Because I'm just like, 
information. I need to get it. I'm on an Australian group, <laughs> Canada communications group, because mm. you just get information and exactly. then you hear what people are doing. Exactly. And then you learn and you grow. Exactly. Um, and that was the question for uh, Googie Googie. Incidentally, the book by Googie Wath Younger, Decolonize Your Mind, mind yes. changed my life. And I recommend it to all the viewers that are watching. Uh, read, read that book. Um, the second question is from Martin James Wilkinson. What is your view on borrowing to expand the business or maybe using your own resources? Um, I, I, I have differing views on this one. Um, personally, I've, I didn't borrow. However, um, what I also find challenging, especially for young startups, is that even if they want to borrow, the banks are not, are, are not, you know, um, are not offering to give them because they don't have, uh, what do you call, what is the word? Um, collateral. collateral. They don't have collateral and stuff like that. So if you can have people buying into your business idea, but also one thing that I've also learned, find people with the same passion and the same focus because those people will invest without expecting back. Uh, this is a funny thing. Don't sell your idea to every Jim and Jack because uh, the other Jack will want their money back and you're still struggling to start up. So you have to be very careful. I am all for sell your idea to like-minded people who can invest. If you have a way of actually starting up with a service or a product without needing assistance, right. by all means, start, start saving up. And I mean, um, finance is always a problem. So, you know, uh, once the center is set up, we are going to provide the service of, you know, getting to the minimal viable product, mm. you know, uh, because we know it's a challenge for startups just to see their product, see it in the packaging, and maybe go with that product and, and get investors. So we look forward in the future really to welcome startups at our incubation center I and taking that step with them. Honestly, I actually remember me and a group of girls, we wanted to start up something where we finance, let's say as minimum as 5,000 to people that want to start. What is this, the, the, the sharks, what do they call yeah. them? Yeah. <laughs> exactly. So sometimes I think in Namibia, it's just an idea that's on my mind as well, because not everybody is as lucky as Mercy. Not everybody is like Trump who has a father who can give them a million dollars. You understand? So we need to support where that person needs resources. But yeah. <coughs> um, guys, time is not on our side. But uh, I just want to give a big, big shout out before we take your final takeaways. Uh, I want to give some shout outs to all the people that are watching on, on our, our live stream. Luis Katanga, uh, I think all the way from India, if I'm not wrong. Wow. Um, We've got Shinobu Armstrong Vertboy, who said, way to go startup Namibia. Thank you so much for watching. We've got Lelani Kuhanga, uh, who said, thank you so much for such, such a time. We, we really need such teachings. Thanks, startup Namibia. I love it. Um, Ngugi Ngugi, Maximilian van Veik. Um, we've got Man Nandango, uh, who said, word of mouth really helps. So she agrees with you on, on that specific uh, point. Tuli Hanjala. Tuli Hanjala is a top, top, top fan of Startup Namibia. Sweet. We can post a full stop and she will like it. Oh. <laughs> she, just, <laughs> oh. she just really, we thank you so much for, for all your support. Uh, I can't mention everyone uh, because we have to go to the session. But I want to take one question from our super fan, Tuli. Mm. Um, what are the do's and don'ts? Uh, of, of, of a startup and I think that can lead to your three three takeaways from the journey yes. and not a destination mm. um, personally like I said look I started in 2008 and the first few years were going quite slow oh, 2008. 2008 I thought 18 no so, <laughs> so you're not a so I started the first few years were quite slow but because of the limiting uh, beliefs society you not succeed and, and yet there was so much word of mouth coming back with positive feedback so believe in yourself that idea that passion but most importantly whatever that idea is remember what i also mentioned earlier that just because you have a solution 
for a problem? Is it a pain point for the audience that you're selling it to? That is very important. Because again, the candy, vitamin, painkiller. If it's just candy or a vitamin, people will not invest in your money. Get comfortable speaking about purpose and profit. Get comfortable. If, you, if you're still struggling with that aspect of profit, by all means, Startup Namibia is here. Startup Namibia is here. I mean, consult on the, on the ideas that you have, and then who knows, that profit in a, in a form of um, a startup amount or you know, a collateral or something, it would be very helpful. And for that, I'm really grateful to Startup Namibia. Um, one major thing, again, have a model. And I think working without a model is what made me go very slow in the beginning. But once you have a model, whether it's on the actual business as well as on, on the actual customers, that sets you up in terms of progression, a systematic uh, model that you're following. It really helps you focus because it's easy to get distracted in times like, um, like now with the coronavirus and then you don't know what systems your people have. So people, always focus on your people. It doesn't matter what your core values are because it's the people that actually drive our businesses. And I think generally in Namibia, we need to understand that our customers are actually the most important things. Without them, there is no business. They are the ones who talk. They are the ones who recommend, they are the ones who destroy. And remember, you can destroy a reputation of a business in five minutes, but it takes you almost 10 years to build it. Absolutely. So keep that in mind, keep that in mind. No, uh, we, we have two minutes. I just wanted you to talk about, you know, whenever there's a challenge, mm. there's an opportunity. Oh, and yeah. what do you see are some of the opportunities during COVID-19 for startups and small growing businesses? I think the major thing is, Go online. Whatever your business is, start being more on social media. One of my good friends, um, <laughs> Dr. Mush, he said, Mush has told me, mercy if you're not networking. And now is the time for social media networking. You won't believe I never used to use um, Facebook once in a while to post photos of a holiday and stuff like that. So use social media to market your product. Use social media to get connections everywhere. Network, network and network. And during Corona, we've all moved to Zoom. Yeah. We're all Zooming. <laughs> okay. I'm, I'm seeing my producer there um, giving me an angry look. Um, <laughs> colleagues, friends, everybody. It's been an exciting, exciting evening. Um, thank you, everyone, for, for being with us. Um, I just want to once again thank those that make this possible uh, for Startup Namibia to hold the campfire sessions. It's the GIZ, uh, the Ministry of Industrialization and Trade. Thank you very much from the bottom of our hearts. We appreciate your support. Uh, I would like to thank uh, Ms. Alwendo, uh, Helena Alwendo, who is our sign language trans um, um, interpreter. By next time, I'll be able to say something in sign language. Yeah. <laughs> and. Uh, our, our star, you know, you took your time out. We really appreciate it. Uh, we've got a present for you. We just ran out of time. We can't show everyone the present. No, it's Thank you so much for taking the time. And finally, the crew behind, uh, you know, it's also a startup that's doing this um, for us. We are going to put the link to their services under our, our live stream so that you can contact them if you need uh, social media live streams. Uh, thank you, everyone, and you know, next week we are going to target the tourism sector and look at how the tourism sector is uh, surviving during COVID-19. During the week, check our social media and to see who the speaker will be. Um, thank you so much, everyone. Bye bye. -er. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> thank you again. No, thank you. Thank you so much. Bye. Bye.